really, uh, and thank you everybody for coming today. Uh, I know this is not a protest, but I cannot be with Hong Kongers without beginning by saying, vote for Hong Kong. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be back uh, in Canada and to be here uh, in uh, the greater Toronto area and specifically to be here in Markham and wonderful to be with the Hong Kong community here uh, again. Uh, this is the third stop on uh, my uh, tour of Canada. I was in Ottawa at the beginning of this trip um, meeting members of parliament uh, and global affairs and uh, doing advocacy on behalf of Hong Kong Watch, uh, but also launching uh, my new book, uh, The China Nexus. Uh, and then uh, and I'm here uh, today with my publisher, Dean Batsydale from uh, Optimum Publishing International. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm using two microphones now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I want to thank Dean so much, for, not just for uh, publishing the book and for organizing the book tour and for taking me on, um, but also for being a real uh, ally uh, and fellow activist uh, for Hong Kong and for all the peoples who are suffering under the Chinese Communist Party regime. Uh, after Ottawa, we were in uh, Montreal and we did a great event there. We had a, then we came to Toronto yesterday, we did an event last night uh, in, in Toronto City, and now I'm with you today. And I just thought I would say a few words about the book, uh, very briefly, about why I wrote it uh, and what it says. Basically, uh, this book is uh, a wake-up call. Uh, I wrote it because I could see uh, the dismantling of Hong Kong's freedoms uh, and autonomy and the rule of law. But at the same time, I could see so many other uh, tragedies uh, committed by the Chinese Communist Party regime. The genocide of the Uyghur people, the continued atrocities uh, in Tibet, uh, the persecution of Christians in China, uh, the uh, issue of forced organ harvesting in China, uh, the crackdown on civil society and lawyers uh, and bloggers and uh, activists uh, across uh, mainland China. And on top of all of that, of course, uh, the increasing threats to Taiwan, as well as the Chinese Communist Party's uh, complicity with the atrocities in two countries that border China, where I have also spent much of my life working uh, for human rights and freedom. Uh, Myanmar or Burma uh, and North Korea. So the book looks at all of these issues uh, and it concludes with a chapter on what the international community uh, should do to help the people of Hong Kong and to help all the other people who are suffering under the CCP. Uh, the, the book uh, has two chapters on Hong Kong itself. Uh, because uh, I went uh, uh, straight after graduating from university uh, to uh, work in Hong Kong for the first five years uh, after the handover. I had already been in China uh, before that. When I was 18 years old, I went to teach English uh, in the city of Qingdao on the east coast of China. Uh, famous, as I'm sure you know, for the best beer in China. That wasn't the reason I went there, but it was a nice discovery once I was there. Um, and I made many friends in Qingdao. And uh, one thing that I'm clear about in the book is that uh, I am against the Chinese Communist Party, but I am for the different peoples uh, who live under its rule. So I'm for the peoples of China, and for the Uyghurs, and for the Tibetans. And as I think you know, I'm very much for Hong Kongers. So uh, the first chapter is my time in Qingdao, the second chapter is my five years in Hong Kong, uh, when at that time, One Country, Two Systems was working pretty well, maybe not perfectly, but, but pretty well. And um, 
I describe uh, the, the experiences of living in Hong Kong. But then later in the book, I have a second chapter on Hong Kong, which looks at the situation from the time of the Umbrella Movement uh, in 2014 uh, until the present day. Uh, and in solidarity with not only the Umbrella Movement, but the whole democracy movement uh, since then, whenever I speak on Hong Kong, I usually carry a yellow umbrella, but today it's sunny weather in Toronto, so I didn't need an umbrella. If I don't wear a yellow umbrella, I usually wear a yellow tie. But today I knew uh, I didn't need to be formally dressed, so I didn't wear a tie. But I am wearing a yellow shirt. <laughs> so in, in the chapter, the second chapter on, on Hong Kong, I, I look at everything that has happened since 2014. Some of you may be aware that in 2017, uh, I was uh, denied entry to Hong Kong. I was probably uh, the first foreigner to uh, be denied entry to Hong Kong. There have been others since me, but I think that I was probably the, the first. And of course, what I have experienced is nothing compared to what Hong Kongers uh, in Hong Kong and many of you who have had to leave Hong Kong uh, have experienced. But it gives me at least some sense of uh, what you are going through, because like you, uh, like many of you, I, I cannot no longer go to Hong Kong, the city that was once my home, the city where I began uh, my working life. Uh, not only was I denied entry in 2017, but in uh, March uh, this year, I woke up one morning and opened my emails to find, to my surprise, uh, a letter from firstly the Hong Kong Police Force and then the Hong Kong National Security Bureau telling me that uh, what I am doing personally and what we in Hong Kong Watch uh, are doing uh, is uh, a serious threat to China's national security uh, and that we are in serious violation of Hong, Hong Kong's draconian national security law. Of course, we don't have any entity in Hong Kong. We are entirely based in both the UK and we have a growing team and presence uh, in Canada. Uh, but uh, still, we, we've been threatened under the national security law. And I was threatened with a prison sentence of the first letter said one to three years, the second letter said three years to life. Yeah. Um, so uh, the book tells uh, all these experiences, both of my own personal experiences, but more importantly, the story of Hong Kongers and all the other people suffering under the CCP. And it is a call, it is a wake up call, but it is also a call to action. And so I hope that, uh, thank you to those of you who have already bought a copy. Uh, there are still some copies left, and I hope that you'll come and see me and buy a copy and I'll sign it for you. And I hope that you'll tell others, uh, tweet about it, post about it, and uh, tell others to read this book. But not just to read this book, but to read it uh, and then to act uh, to help uh, free Hong Kong and free China. So thank you very much. Bon Phuc Hong Kong.